So Abraham's mind was, oh, he got to do that. He got to heal me. He got to deliver me. He got to, he got to, he got to prosper me. He, he got to give me a seed that I never start. It went from God will you to you got to. Now, God knows he got to. What I'm trying to get you to see is that you got to know he got to. If you do your part, God got to do his part. The only way he don't, excuse me, English, got to do nothing is when you break the agreement and don't do what you're supposed to do. Supposed to do. Everybody follow me now? So this covenant between God and Abraham. Now, when you get born again, you get in Christ. And once you're in Christ, you're in that seed. And the covenant commitment was the covenant between Abraham and the seed, and the seed is Christ. And once you get saved, you're in that seed, you're in Christ, and if you be Christ, then you're what? Abraham's seed, and 29 in verse chapter 3 says, and heirs according to the promise. Now, I need you to say this out loud. I am, I am in, Christ. in Christ. Therefore, Therefore I, am, I am, and I have. Legal right, legal right to the Abrahamic covenant. Amen. I am an heir of God, Amen. joint heir with Christ Jesus. Amen. Abraham's blessings Amen. are mine. Amen. So whatever God promised Abraham, I say me too. How many of you believe that? Do you really believe that? You believe you are a covenant partner with God. Yeah. Is there anything I can do to change your mind? No. <laughs> so you, you, you're, you're sold on this. You're, you are God's covenant partner. Yeah. And there are some things God has to do, right? Yeah. You believe that. Yeah. The doctor tells you you got cancer. But what, what do you say? I got a covenant. You see cancer, I see covenant. I'm not looking at this thing through your eyes. I'm looking at this thing through the eyes of my covenant. You see broke, I see rich, because I'm not looking at what not here now. I'm looking at it through the eyes of my covenant. You see lack, I see provision, because I'm not looking at the things that can be seen. I'm looking at the things that are not seen, for the things that are seen are subject to change, but the things that are not seen are eternal. And it's not I'm trying to get rich, I'm already rich. It's not I'm trying to get healed, I'm already healed. I got a covenant. Bring me the title deed to your car, and that is proof that a car exists. I don't need to see your car. All I need to see is some words that entitles you to that vehicle. Your blood covenant is nothing but words that entitle you to healing and deliverance. And, and, and provision and, and, and blessings and multiplication. Not because I'm religious, because I got a covenant and I know my covenant. Now let's read Ephesians chapter 2 and, and 11. And let's, let's look at verse 12. Read verse 12 out loud together. Ready to read. That at that time you were without Christ. All right, stop right now. Stop, stop. Oh, this is good. What is a man's position? As far as covenant is concerned, what is a man's position when he's without Christ? He's without a covenant, right? He's without a covenant, right? Because without Christ would make you uh, uncircumcised. Because when you get Christ, there's the circumcision of the heart. So, no Christ, no covenant. No Christ, no covenant. And that's what David saw with, with Goliath. He said, why are y'all hiding? Why are y'all so afraid? Who is this big boy that don't have a covenant with God? Who is this? He called him. He called him. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? 